here with me listening to uh, the work I will go to present now. So I'd like to share with you this quality approach we did on cardiovascular risk in women. Um, this happens uh, so we know today that oral contraceptives are the most used methods of birth control. It's chosen by over 70% of women. And this is a very well-known fact. And we also know that this kind of medicine are often associated with a high uh, risk of cardiovascular events. So we know that the synergy with tobacco is very well known, although not always we have that into account during clinical practice, especially in primary care when we have a big pool of patients. So here we have uh, the World uh, Health Organization recommendations. So they say that over 35 years old, every woman uh, with, uh, that smokes over 15 cigarettes per day should absolutely not be taking oral contraceptive pills. And on those who smoke less than 50 cigarettes per day, uh, it is not the, the, the best option, basically. So uh, usually the, the maleficients uh, overcome the benefits, but obviously we need to make this choice patient by patient. So probably we all know this. However, in the clinical practice, sometimes it can become very challenging to choose a method that is, uh, that is, um, adjusted to each woman because uh, every woman is, a, is particular and sometimes it is hard to find a method that she's okay and comfortable with. So we chose to make this study to, um, to see if the use of combined oral contraceptives in the female population who smokes and with the target age between 35 and 54 years old, um, belonging to our four family health units. So we, we wanted to study this population and we wanted to see if the smokers were taking a combined oral contraceptives or not. So we wanted to make sure that this rule was being uh, correctly applied, and we were protecting our women of the cardiovascular negative outcomes. So we chose to uh, collect the data. We intend to introduce an uh, educational intervention in the different sectors, targeting all doctors from these four family health units. And then after this intervention, our goal will be to achieve 0% rates of combined oral contraceptive pills in our target population. So our study design was a quasi-experimental with pre and post intervention testing. So we, we picked data from patients of 20, 28 physicians belonging to fourth health units. And we did this on the first round on the first uh, on February of 2019. So our sample was a convenient sample and it was institutional bi biases. So we picked this pool of patients and we went to search for women who were registered with ICPC2 code W11, which was the code for oral contraception. We excluded the patients who had their last medical appointment before 2017, and obviously women before 35 years old or after 54 years old who were probably in, in uh, menopause, and then also non-smoking women that didn't interest us. So this is our timeline. Basically, we took the first two months, March and April for data collection. Then we had the intervention on June of 2019. And then 
in post intervention phase, we collect again the data on August 2019. So we used our Portuguese pro programs of data of patients uh, register, which are as clinic, and then we moved to take the overall analysis. And then we treated the statistics on Excel. So during the interventional phase, our intervention was educational. It consisted on meeting all the doctors in each unit and uh, making a presentation of physiological context and who recommendations, and then presenting the results. Actually, for me, for example, I printed the whole list and give to each doctor so they could see which, uh, which patients needed a, a special special treatment. So presenting first phase of results and then improvements suggestions. So these are the results of the first evaluation. We had women diagnostic with ECPC 2W11 and uh, you know who, who met our inclusion criteria who were 2487 women then from this we take only the smokers who were 428 women and then from this only 179 patients were smokers and were taking a, an oral contraceptive so uh, post intervention so these 179 women were on the located on the um, risk, uh, risk stratification three or four according to who criteria. And then post intervention, uh, half of them didn't have a new appointment yet. And the other half have, an, have, have, another, have already another appointment. So, from those women who had another a new appointment, ten had um, their uh, on ten of these appointments the contraception were uh, talked about and switched, and four in four they didn't mention the contraception. So what changed? S six of them uh, changed to a progestative oral contraceptive. Three of them. Uh, switch to CU, and one of them refused to change. So our effective approaching the theme was 90%, and we had an improvement rate of 32%. So we need a little extra effort till 100%. And to be fair, uh, some of them had a codification issue, and it was not actually uh, a patient who had the wrong or the the, mo the inappropriate contraceptive pill, but it was actually a problem of registration on the um, on the program. So on short term, uh, we had some improvement suggestions as summon users for clarification and change of method or smoking cessation. And in future consideration, consider the risk before introducing contraceptive oral pills and also checking the smoking status. On long term, we suggest evaluate and record the number of cigarettes per day at least once a year, clarify the true consumption of women with records of one cigarette per day, preparing women aged 33 to 34 to stop smoking or change their contraceptive method always record which bill in the family planning program, uh, improving the registration methods, methods and record bill which roll and finish code W11 also for the registration methods. So to discuss this, results are still far from the target. Some reasons that may justify are reduced time interval, so we reevaluated only three months after, which in most cases it's not enough to make a new appointment. And the issue of contraception was addressed in 57% of the new appointments. 
Despite the modest results, there was a perception of the possibility of improving quality with new interventions and evaluations being planned in order to increase the rate of improvement. Limitations. So we found some problems. Uh, the code W11 was in other situations coded for women who did not had oral contraception in motion. For example, some of them would, uh, were um, uh, using implants or CO or DO or a vaginal ring and were coded with W11. Um, and also um, sometimes they were still coded and they were they already had suspended the contraceptive. So probably we have a problem of overdiagnosis with double 11 codes. Also, we found the problem of uh, registration about smoking. So some women uh, probably had already stopped smoking or possibly um, never smoked and the, the records were not according to the reality. And this is what I had for you today. I hope with this uh, presentation, I encourage you to review out your own records and maybe check for patients who are in a higher risk of iatrogenic thromboembolic events, and maybe to encourage you to do some quality research on other themes as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Rita, for this valuable presentation.